I was actually editing in Pakistan. We were supposed to do the final edit of the film there. Before we started editing, I, because I hadn't worked with the editor there before, we decided that we were going to watch about 10 films together. Because of lack of time and deadlines, etc., we ended up only watching one film called Baraka. Come five months later, Pakistan started experiencing a lot of electricity shortages. So we were losing electricity every couple of hours, which, as you can understand, is not conducive to editing at all. My producer, David Jansen, had already moved, after leaving Pakistan from the shoot, had already moved to Santa Fe. So I called him up all hysterical, saying, you know, I can't edit the film here. Like, we've got a rough cut, but where do we go from here? So he said, well, let me look around, because New York, I'm a New Yorker, originally. New York is going to be too expensive to edit, so let me look around in Santa Fe. He ended up meeting David Aubrey, who happened to be one of the editors of Baraka, and called me up and said, you won't believe it, but the only movie that we all saw before you started editing, Baraka, the editor lives here, and he would be interested in the project. And that's how I landed up in Santa Fe almost a year and a half ago, to work with David Aubrey on the post-production side of the film. There's a lot of shooting happening in New Mexico, but uh, apparently I'm one of the first full-length feature films to do all my post-production here. The only part of the post that we didn't complete here, which I had to go back to New York and uh, do, is the sound mix. But there are sound mixing facilities available in Santa Fe. We just couldn't get time in it. By the time we were ready, they were already booked up, and we were again on a deadline. You're always on a deadline in film. So ended up going back to New York for that. But other than that, color correction, our editing, everything else happened here, all the post-production in Santa Fe. We have a lot more in uh, common with Slumdog than uh, I guess it'll start coming out now. We had the same experience as Danny Boyle. We had a deal on the table with a company. Danny Boyle, the director of Slumdog, had a deal. And it, uh, the company, before he could go into full distribution with them, folded. We had a similar deal almost six months ago because there was a lot of interest in a film coming out of Pakistan, especially since it deals with a completely different perception of Islam, which is Sufism, and the fact that it's in English, mainly in English, it's 75% in English. The deal fell apart. Danny Slumdog was about to go to DVD, get saved by a big company. We were dead in the water <laughs> a couple of months ago until suddenly the buzz started picking up. We got into the Santa Fe Film Festival. We started getting booked into art house theaters, not just here, we're getting booked in Canada as well, all on its own. People are writing about us. So it's like we're the underdog to slum dog suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, it's absolutely helping us. Slum dog has been, it's a wonderful movie, but it is generating a lot of curiosity and interest in that part of the world. You know, at the end of the day, sensationalism is what sells newspapers or that big event thing that has happened. And my goal has been kind of to show also there are 160 million people in Pakistan. They're not all terrorists. This is a very small minority which is creating a lot of havoc. The rest of the people follow a very different brand of Islam, which is not uh, talked about in the media here and want to have a progressive country, just like anybody else. So this is trying to create at least a more depth of perception of what the country is about. Two of the major comments that stand out for me about the movie in response to the movie. One is people have stood up literally when I've been doing a Q&A and said, this movie needs to be seen by everyone. <laughs> because it does create that big a shift in perception of uh, Pakistan as a country. The second one, which has been utterly and absolutely surprising, is, are you going to make a sequel? And I am I just never had thought of that, that there would be a sequel to this film. But apparently the audience by the end of the movie is so hooked into the two main characters that they're left hanging thinking, what will happen to them next? So it transcends, what's really gratifying is it transcends Pakistan, politics, Sufism, mysticism, anything, and it just goes very much into a human interest curiosity along, you know, in these characters. So that's been, that's been very surprising. Um, 
L is for Lahore, the city of Lahore, which is the main film industry right now in Pakistan. And we are absolutely officially called Lollywood because you have Hollywood and then you have Bollywood from Bombay. And we have Tamaliwood. And now you have Tamaliwood. So yes, we are, Lollywood is the industry in Pakistan. We make 17 films a year. Uh, we have no infrastructure. Cinema as a, a medium has been uh, very deprived in Pakistan for the past 35 years. So all those films look like as they've been shot in the 70s. Yep. Working in Lollywood, there are a couple of uh, female directors who do work in Lollywood. And there is another female director who's just done a film, um, similar international level kind of film. There's actually, there's actually a lot of female directors. Right. The first English language feature film in 30 years. Yes, that we are a first. Because for 30, there was one English language feature film about 30, 35 years ago. And we're the next one. We speak uh, back and forth with our native tongue. So most people have some command of English? Yes. And there's a lot of English words which have now become part of the vocabulary even for you know somebody who's not English speaking per se they will use English words they will pepper their conversation with it.